And I was like, Michael, where did you hear? Maybe Michael heard when, something. When he said that, hear. when Michael Bublé said that, I said, oh, he's not picking you. Hello, welcome to the Pitchy Podcast. We are your hosts, James and Stephanie. Here on the Pitchy Podcast, we are passionate about good music and a great vocal. We'll use the vehicle of NBC's The Voice to give you our take on each contestant. We'll give you our feedback on their voice and their overall performance. Here on the Pitchy Podcast, we will always keep it 100 with our feedback and critique of each contestant. But what we're never here to do is come for anyone's character or any contestant as a human being. Although, we may come off a little bitchy at times, if you know what I mean. We'll always always do our best to speak our truths with love, kindness, and respect. And with that, let's go ahead and get started with Season 26, Episode 2 of The Blinds. Hey, Stephanie, how you doing? I'm here. I'm doing good. How are you, James? I'm here too. I'm here too. That's, it was a it, it was a long day, long long day. Life is okay. lifing, huh? Life is lifing. Yes, it is. One thousand so percent. We got a lot to talk about tonight. Um, I felt like like as a whole, it was country heavy tonight. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. A lot of country artists tonight. So. Um, yeah, so I, I learned a lot of new songs. I definitely did. <laughs> songs that I like. Beautiful gowns. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but it was it if, was a lot of country. If you know, you know. If you know, you yes. know. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right in to All our right. very first uh, contestant. Mm-hmm. And uh, how do you pronounce his name? It's Drion. I actually learned that on his Instagram page. Okay. Drion. Drion. 27 years old. From Omaha, Nebraska, and he sang "You're a Shining Star" by, by Earth, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Elements. Yes, the elements. By the elements. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes. Otherwise known as Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's a great story. Um, it's yes. amazing when you hear someone's come up and it's like where from where they come from and their story. Yes. Yeah. And their story goes, um, you know, is attributed to so much of who they are mm-hmm. and ha- to hear how much of a success Mr. Um, Drian uh, has become mm-hmm. in not just as an artist, but as a f- husband, as a father yes. and, um, and reconnecting with his mother. Um, it was just a beautiful, beautiful story of humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, first of all, before Dreon even opened up his mouth, I could tell that this this young man was a full, he was just a fireball. Of oh yeah. Energy. Um, oh yeah. And then he started singing. I said, "Oh," I said, because I was a little worried because he was like, "Okay, I opened for Earth, Wind, and Fire," and mm-hmm. then he was singing an Earth, Wind, and Fire song. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, and he came right in, and it was like. Dun, dun, dun. And like this is a it's a very popular Earth Wind and Fire song, one of their most popular songs. And I was like, um, I loved it. I loved his upper extension and most importantly, I loved that he made slight changes, ever so yeah. slight changes to the melody, but mm-hmm. still stayed true. Because mm-hmm. it is a very well known song, very well known mm-hmm. melody. I thought he was very respectful of the original, but managed to put his own twist on it while still being respectful, which is very Absolutely. hard to do with a classic. I right. said, you know what? I can already tell that he is going to have a ball with Paul and the band because oh, yeah. he is a musician. Mm-hmm. And when a musician who is a singer, because yes, singers, we are musicians. Okay, Come remember on. that. Musicians are not just instrumentalists. Singers are musicians too. Mm-hmm. I said, you can hear just the pure musicality coming from his voice. Mm-hmm. And um, so I could tell he's an instrumentalist because mm-hmm. of how musical his vocal sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I loved it. Like, he did this stretch thing into his falsetto. He just didn't hop into his falsetto, kind of like another singer did that we'll talk about a right. little bit later. I felt like it was like, I can't yeah. do it because it's very late, but it was really cool how he did it. Like an um, instrument. I said, incredible ener energy and star power. I said, I really like him and his voice. And I said, he could win it mm -hmm. just because of, of the energy and star power alone. And he's got a killer voice, killer voice. Great, strong start to the episode. Stephanie? Absolutely. Um, what was cool about Dreon's uh, audition was that we actually got a little mini peek of it today on oh, NBC's The Voice Instagram uh, on their inst on one of their Instagram clips that they put out uh, later on this afternoon, which is interesting because they don't usually leak <laughs> anything, no. any uh, any performances, and it was just like ten seconds worth of his audition. Um, so I got a little bit of a sneak peek and they played, played the very beginning of it where he's like, hit me. And I was like, oh, energy. Like you always talk about, James, how you, how we want somebody to grab us in the very first couple seconds of, of an audition. And he definitely, he definitely grabbed me and I wanted to hear more. Wow. It is really tough. And there's only really been one artist to do it that gives us all the tricks yeah. all the tricks all of his vocal tricks that he has and can do it in a way where it's not like wait 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 too right. much too much too much um our friend devix from a Devix, previous season absolutely. was a master of that and i felt like dreon did that in this performance and it didn't sound messy. It didn't sound like it was too much. It just literally sounded like he was going to give us as many aspects of his voice and the things that he could do with his voice in this one audition song. And mm -hmm. for him to do that in such a popular song like this was really, really brilliant. And it was a wonderful, um, it was just wonderful execution. Um, it's rare that I see an artist be able to do a kind of sound like yeah. that, like sound, yeah. but do it well, yeah. like, and not just have it sound like some throwaway thing that an artist is just doing to make impact during a performance. Every, I felt like everything that he did was really thoughtfully done, but in the most energetic and fun way. And it was a really yeah. great way to open up the show. Very yeah. respectful, very yes. respectful of a high energy song that, to your point, could you could get carried away on. Yes, you could. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome job, Jay. I can't wait to see what you do uh, down the coming down uh, the different uh, different rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, I think Paul and the band, he's going to have a blast with them. Oh, absolutely. I hope they let him play because it looked like he played many instruments and I hope they let him yes. play. Um, yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, who do we have next? Well, let's say who he picked for his coach oh. because he was a four chair turn. He was a yeah. four chair turn. And he he snooped on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh yeah. Had to go with Snoop. <laughs> Listen, don't All get right. me started. <laughs> <laughs> he picked Snoop. Yes, he did. The D O double G. They pick up. Yes, yes. Snoop is building a pretty formidable team, I'll tell you. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Okay, great. So, who do we have next? Next up, we have Moore Ilderton, 20 years old from Tees Valley, West Virginia. I'm just going to say that. He sang Coal by Tyler Childers. Coal. A song I had never heard of, um, but I liked it. I like Ooh, the I song. Liked it too. I like it too. Um, more, I see you. I'm one generation out of West Virginia. My mom and dad are from West Virginia. Shout out to Parkersburg and Beckley. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm very familiar with the state. Um, more is another one who had uh, a, a pretty remarkable story. Mm -hmm. You know, Steph, mm -hmm. you can tell some people have lived and have a story by the way they sound, and that's more. Come on. Okay? 
yeah. war has been through, and you can hear in his voice that he has been through. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not just it's not just it's not just uh, um, created, right? Right. It's, this is a young man who said, you know, I've been singing that long because um, you could tell by his performance because it was very introspective. Because, but I think it was introspective because he was nervous because right. he's never performed before. Right. Um, I said, but what a natural gift. Mm-hmm. What a natural gift. I think he can pick, I think the, the coaches and him can really fix the pitch issues that, For sure. that were heard. Cause there were, there were a, a couple of pitch issues. Um, I said, but he has a lot of appeal and Buble was spot on the money where he said, this dude could be huge because he's fresh He's untrained and he's moldable, moldable, if yep. that's a word. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what the appeal is. Um, and he's got he's got a story. He's got mm-hmm. he's got a story to tell. Not and I'm just not talking about his story. He's got a story to tell with his voice. Absolutely. This this young man who was raised by his grandmother and he even said like I was too wild and my, my grandmother couldn't hang. So I had to go get raised by my uncle and aunt. Mm-hmm. And my uncle was like, he was grounded. Okay. Like he was yep. a bad kid. But you I know think what? he was a Marine, right? Wasn't his uncle a Marine? Yes. So, you know, he probably whipped that in the, you know, yes, sir, no, sir. Um, but that's um, right. His uncle was so proud. So mm-hmm. proud. Um, and uh, I, I see, I see more, I see young Moore making a deep run in this competition because of of those things. He's fresh, he's untrained, he's multiple, and he's got a story to tell. Stephanie. Y'all wait till he really find his voice. Oh. Y'all wait. Oh yeah. It's gonna be scary. I hope this is not a misquote, but I'm pretty sure that this was a quote. I've never sang into a mic before. I said, well, I cannot wait until the upcoming rounds, Mr. Moore, because the minute you get comfortable having this in your hand and you let your voice and you learn how your voice travels into that mic and what those sound engineers can do, and you are really, really free, you're going to tell some stories on this The Voice stage and using that The Voice mic. Um, I got chills. I, I literally had chills when he was singing because I felt the authenticity and the sincerity in his voice and there was a there was a tenderness but also a rawness to the way that he was singing that I found so honest um I thought that this was a really great song choice for him because it sounded like his song and anybody that has a voice like that needs to sing a song that sounds like it's their song Mm -hmm. um I can't wait to see more of him because I think that the more comfortable he gets being up on a stage and being in that kind of arena, in that performance arena, the more his voice and his self is going to shine through. It is, mm-hmm. it is a, and it's, and this is hard in that genre. It is a country oh, yeah. sound that you've never heard before. Right. Like it's crazy. Uh, the mm-hmm. potential this young man has, yeah, yes, he's really yeah. good, really. He's good. really good, and, mm-hmm. and 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 doesn't even realize how good he is. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Can't wait to see mm-hmm. what he does. Um, who did he right? wind up going with, Stephanie? So this was an interesting one because everybody turned except for Gwen, and when Michael turned, he bo- he blocked Reba. So Moore did end up going with Michael Bublé. Yeah. That was good for mm-hmm. Michael because you know yeah. he was gonna he was gonna choose Reba. You knew he yes. was. Yes. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. So our next contestant, this was our leak on Friday. Yes, and, it was. Um, who did we have? She's got a story. Uh her name is Felsmir. She's thirty three years old from Vera Beach, Florida, and she sang some kind of wonderful, uh, done by everybody. Yeah, <laughs> done by who everybody. Hasn't, who hasn't done exactly. some kind of wonderful? There um, is one person that did this song that I was quite interested that did it, but I'll share that a little bit later. Okay, um, I said I think she can sing. I said, but I'm 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 questioning how far she's going to make it on this competition. 
because I'm not too sure about the energy. I felt the energy was a little lacking. Um, I think that she needs a coach that is going to help her be a better performer. Because, mm -hmm. I, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like she thinks maybe, and I could be totally off, that she doesn't have any, a problem with her performing or or needs to step up the perform her performance. Like, right. this is her whole vibe, her whole, you know, real chill kind of bohemian kind of vibe. But it came mm -hmm. off a little uh, lacking energy. Yeah. Energy, me. absolutely. And, yes. um, and I think that if she gave us more of the energy maybe you and I were looking for, I think mm -hmm. that would put her at a really, really high level because it's a nice voice. Yes, it is. I just was kind of like, huh, with the performance part of it. Yes. And I need performance and voice on this show. Yeah, Stephanie? for sure. For sure. Um, first of all, her leak on Friday was very interesting because they showed all of her audition up until somebody turned for her, which is unusual because usually for our Friday leaks, we get four chair turns, the whole bit, you know, incredible, outstanding vocal. And we're waiting on Monday to see who the artists pick. And this Correct. time it was a little bit different. And we were trying to understand why that was. Um, we believe that it is because, and if you watch the show, you know, she was in the very first season of NBC's The Voice, and she actually made a team. She was on CeeLo Green's team. Um, and at the time, she went by the name of Kelsey Ray. Um, so I'm not really quite sure why there was such this mystery around her uh, on the socials, on NBC's The Voice socials, because they put up her name and then they took it down. Like it was a whole thing, and it was just a weird. Uh, it was a more, it was a different style audition to leak. Um, so I was waiting to see whether she would be a couple chair turn, a one chair turn, or would do something amazing at the end of her performance and everybody would turn. Well, it ended up she was a two chair turn. And I agree with James, like the energy was lacking a bit for me. Like it felt very chill, but chill with no, not enough energy behind it. You can be a chill artist, but have an energy have an behind you, like right? have an in, have intensity and have an intention intentionality, if if that's a word, and have a a confidence. And it I, that that's not it was what it was giving to me. Whether that's how she felt on stage or not, I don't know. But that's not what it was giving. Now, what I did hear, and this is the interesting part, what I did hear. So I'm like, who, who, what kind of artist can I connect her with, right? What I came up with was Joss Stone. And it's interesting because Joss Stone did do a version of the song. So I wonder if Joss Stone's version was the version that she kind of mirrored to do her, her audition. But even Joss Stone Joss has five. an... Yeah, she has, but she has an, a more of an energy behind her. But like you said, I think she has a nice voice and I... I'm very curious to see what, how her coach is going to mold her and what kind of mm -hmm. song choices that they go for moving forward. Yeah, I think yeah. if they, uh, like I said before, I think if they can help her to get that energy up, she's going to be, she's going to be a pretty good contestant and make a pretty mm -hmm. good run, I think. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, who does she end up going with? So the two coaches that turned for her were Gwen and Michael and she picked coach Gwen which I think is a good pickup for Gwen and I think even more so it is a good pickup for Felsmere because I really think Gwen is going to hone in on what she hears that Felsmere does the best and will pick songs to support her vocal okay great mm -hmm. okay um who do we have next Next up, we have Camilla Keeney, 17 years old, Los Lunas, New Mexico, and she sang my jam. Mm -hmm. She sang my jam. Black Velvet by Alana Miles. Black mm. Velvet. Uh, she was 17, wasn't she? Um, She's 17 years old. Yeah, very young. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, one of the things that I think that um, um, Camilla has going for her 
is that she had a very youthful sound. Mm-hmm. It was a very clear tone. Mm-hmm. And I loved the vocal choices that she was making. Mm-hmm. I hear a country pop sound. Did you get that, Stephanie? I did. Yeah, I, I did. really did. So <laughs> I, I want to hear her sing some Carrie. I want to hear her sing some Trisha. I want to hear some Shania. Like I want to yes. hear, I want to hear that the the country pop icons. Yes. Um, yes. Um, yeah, and I said very marketable voice. Very. Um, the vo- the vocal choices that she was making, especially towards the end of the song, were yeah. um made this song a really good audition piece. Um, I I, I want to hear her sing other genres. Because mm-hmm. I feel like she has a voice that does kind of hybrid between two monster genres in the pop yes. country. So yes. I want to hear what she does poppy, a little bit more poppy, less rocky, and a little bit more country, <laughs> less rocky. Yeah. I want to hear that. Um, and she seemed really happy to be there. Like she just, oh, absolutely. She was like giddy almost. Like she, yes. like I love the youthful exuberance of just taking in that moment. Yes. It was it was really nice and refreshing to see. Yeah. So the minute the guitar came in and the drums came in, I was like, okay, this is one of two songs. This is either Black Velvet or this is I'm the Only One by Melissa Etheridge. And I couldn't figure out which one. But the minute she said, Mississippi, I said, oh, and yeah, this was song. another case. This is another case. Where I said, if she can sing the line, Mississippi in the middle of a dry spell, if she can deliver that line, they're going to hit their buttons. And what does she do? Mississippi in the middle of a dry spell. Bop. (laughs) It's It's, it's a great audition piece. It's such a great audition song because that beginning, every if you know the song, you know that you know that intro music, and you are just waiting. And some of these coaches are so quick to hit their button just to hear that first line delivered well, which you know can it could be a great thing, could backfire if you hit too if you hit too quickly. But it worked for Camilla. Um, I completely agreed with Gwen that. She could hear the 17 because it was not completely controlled. I heard that as well. But what I did hear was energy. And what I did hear is girlfriend can belt. She got a belt in her throat. Mm -hmm. And she's going to have some holleration moments on the show. What I'm going to need for her coach to do is just to help her work on the nuances. Because this song is very sultry, right? Yes. But when, when you get sultry, you have nuance. So you can't just belt the whole thing. And I felt like she was like on nine, ten vocally for the entire song where I wanted to hear some some threes and fours, if you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mississippi in the middle of a dress. You know, I want to hear some back and forth, some some nuance. So I think her coach is going to help her with that. But great audition, great song choice, wonderful job. Who'd you wind up going with? She went with Coach Michael. Coach Michael. Yeah, I think Michael is going to refine refine the voice and help yeah. refine the voice and help to polish it. Get it Absolutely. Polished. Yeah, Absolutely. good pickup. All right. So who uh, do we have next? Next up, we had Tanner Frick, 26 years old, from Manchester, Tennessee. And he sang Thought You Should Know by Morgan Wallen. Um, I love this guy. I don't know what is. Is it the sincerity? I, Stephanie, this guy, it's just something about him. You know, there, some people are just so sincere. Some people are so genuine earnest right mm-hmm. like this dude is like yeah i work i'm a foreman i'm an electrician i've been mm-hmm. electrocuted a few times <laughs> i was like wow mm-hmm. um yeah but um <laughs> and i didn't know where this was gonna go because sometimes when they tell these stories i'm like okay i don't know if they're gonna be able to sing right let me tell you something about tanner he's my dark horse so okay far. okay 
Because Tanner did this thing that I've never heard a country singer on this show ever do. And okay. this might sound a little oxymoronic, Stephanie, okay. but it was a sweet, I call it a sweet grit. No, I can hear that for sure. He had, Absolutely. A, there, he had a sweetness to his sound. Mm -hmm. A really sweet, sweet tone, but he had this grit, the Stapleton grit in his mm -hmm. voice. But it was, oh, such a sweet tone um, I, that I've never heard anyone do on this show. I've heard grit. Mm -hmm. I heard, I've heard like pure country, which I'm going to talk about right. with a, another artist that sang. Um, yes. And I've heard pop country. I've heard all these different country. I've heard like, like deep South country, um, honky tonk, whatever. <laughs> um, but it yeah. was a sweetness. A sweetness that mm -hmm. I've never even heard like of, of monster singers like Stapleton and all of them do. It Tanner has right. his own sound. Like uh, kind of like um kind of like my man Moore. I like it's it's a different, different sound. I said, I just I don't know what it is that uh, that I love about this guy, maybe just because of I, I liked his, like his story, like he was raised by a single dad and yeah. um is it, he and his dad just started tearing up and crying. Oh, I was, I, I could see it coming. I was and like, they're going like, to turn that mic to that man and he's going to start crying. You. Like, I was like, he's like, my name is Tanner Freak. I'm from Mississippi, but now I reside in Tennessee. Like, yes. I just loved it. I loved it. Um, And he, and he was just, you know, he looked up on that wall and he's like, oh, where's, Mo where's Morgan? And where's Morgan? <laughs> And and um, I said, this dude's spirit is just beautiful. I loved how his dad said, Snoop. Snoop. <laughs> he said, Snoop. <laughs> like his dad really, really wanted him to choose Snoop. Right. Um, and, then, and then, and you know what it sold me for him, Stephanie? He said, M. <laughs> M. I. Crooked letter. Crooked letter. Did you, did you catch letter, that? Crooked letter. Crooked letter. I said, Tanner. I said, you trying to get the brother. I said, all right, bro. For you, young man. He said, in right, I, that's right. Let it, let it crooked letter. I said, that's my boy right there. I said, I like this kid. Uh, he's my dark horse because this man can sing. Okay. Okay. Stephanie. I thought he had, I thought he had a really pure country voice it, it it was very different than what i've heard so far this season um i i was losing the lyrics a little bit as he was okay. singing and i wasn't very i was not familiar with the song at all so i feel like and i'm going to i'm for for those of you on audio and and video i'm going to talk like this because it sounds like all the words kind of got you like, like it, it just was not yeah it was it just was not clear <laughs> It just was not clear. Um, here's what I'll say. And and this this does not have to be good or bad. It can just be what it is. And I'm going to tend to, towards more of the good side of this trait that I saw. There was just an unbotheredness by Tanner. It was just like, I just felt like he was just up there. And he's grateful for this opportunity. And he's going to sing a song. And if people turn, they turn. And if they don't, he's got a great life at home. Like, it just kind of felt so unbothered. There wasn't, like, a sense of urgency there. Um, I think what I was missing, here's what I was missing. And I think we're going to see this in, in further rounds. I think that I was missing the personality in him that I saw in the B-roll. B I didn't see that as much within the song. Now, when he started talking with Crook Letter, Crook Letter and all that, I was like, oh, there he is. But for the actual performance, it was just very much, I'm going to just stand here and sing my song. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to look for a little bit more personality within the performance of Tanner. But as a person, I really liked him. And I am glad that we get to see more of him in this competition. Yeah, absolutely. Who did Tanner pick? Miss Reba. He was a four chair turn and he, he chose Miss Reba. There. Yes, and he, he did, was. They heard, they heard, I think, what we heard in the voice. So that, that mm -hmm. was a very different yeah. Sweet grit. Sweet grit, Tanner. Sweet grits. Sweet grits. That's what I'm call Sweet grits. Sweet grits. Love it. Now I don't know, Tanner. You are from Mississippi. I don't know. 
Some people are like, no, don't you put no sugar in no grits. I know. We got to confirm what kind, how he so, take his Tanner, grits bro, if you If you do have a social and you check us out, please let us know, do you put sugar in your grits? Sugar in your grits. Because <laughs> if you don't, we're sorry. But we're sorry. That's why I'm going to take the S off of it if you don't and just call it your voice, sweet grit. Right, that's it right. Grit that's in right. it and it was very sweet sound. Yes, awesome. absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Great. Um, so... Um, Tanner picked. I'm sorry. He picked Reba. Reba, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, great pickup. Reba's yes. going. Reba's going to really bring that storyteller out in him. Uh, For sure. To your point, Stephanie. Like For sure. To, to get the performance to match the voice, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Awesome. Okay, who's next? So next up is Rowdy Shay. I could not believe this man's given name was Rowdy. Rowdy Shay, 23 years old, from Bowling Green, Kentucky. And he's saying, you shouldn't kiss me like this by Toby Keith. <laughs> you shouldn't kiss me like this. Um, it, I said, I like this. I like this song. I said, y'all, just a through and through country singer. No absolutely. bells, no whistles. With his 10-gallon hat, his big old belt buckle. That's you know, right. He's a through and through cowboy. Yes. Him and Reba started talking. Um, yes. That, you know, that Texas, Oklahoma steer. I'm like, yeah, yes. that's a two-year-old steer. He's like, oh, that's big of a big em. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's a big, big em. Em. <laughs> Snoop I said, was Come dying. On, Snoop was dying. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I said... I'm not sure because the country is deep this season. So I'm not quite sure how far he's going to go because I think Roddy is going to need to do something to stand out because when you got Tanner and you got more that you're, that you're up against, um, I don't want him to get lost because he's got a really nice voice. I just think, mm-hmm. like I said, and, th- and this is what kind of threw me off. Was it Michael or who said, do you sing other genres or, you know? It was Michael. Yeah. And, and I was like, Michael, really? You hear something else? I was like, do you hear quickly, him? I said, you lost. Get, I said, Rowdy quickly was like, no. I he was like, country. no, I sing country. I to sing country music. And I was like, Michael, where did you hear? Maybe Michael heard when, something. When he, he said that, hear. when Michael Buble said that, I said, oh, he's not picking you. Because Michael's He's got not a good ear, you. though. But you know, I wanted to, I wanted to investigate because I know Michael Bublé has a very, very skilled ear in what he can yes. hear. But yeah, but yeah. to your point, Stephanie, uh, uh-uh, uh, he was like, you "Don't come on here and tell me I'm another type of singer." <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but but I I need Roddy to do something to stand mm-hmm. out because he's got a good voice. I just. It, it it's not it's 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 country deep, you know. They tend to go certain genres per seasons, right? But and this one's yeah. turning pretty country deep, so I'm a little nervous, Stephanie. I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous because I feel like all the country that we've been getting has been the gravelly Appalachia storyteller country. And this dude is classic old school down home country, which is very pleasing to a lot of the demographic that watches the show. So I'm not worried about Rowdy at all. And when Mr. Buble said, do you sing something else? He was like, nah, I was like, no, he don't sing nothing else. Did you hear what was coming out his throat? It was like, it was either I didn't even have to hardly look up this song. I was like, this dude, Toby Keith, Travis Tritt, one of them. <laughs> it was Randy. It was gonna be one of them. Don't go <laughs> there was no the doubt. Yeah. Right. There was there was no doubt. Um, so I actually think that he has his own lane so far in this competition because nobody is singing that point. old school down home country like he is. And for him to be a young man, he's kind of like, oh, our winner from a couple seasons ago. Um, Mr. He's Bryce Leatherwood. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Um, so I was very interested that. Reba did not turn for him. I couldn't see why she did not turn for him. I mean, that was surprising to me. But um, I think he picked the right coach. If it couldn't have been Reba, then he picked the next best thing. Which was, or who was, Coach Gwen? Yeah, yeah. Coach Gwen. 
Yeah, very, very good. Very or, good. Uh, well, I should I should clarify and say that Rowdy did not make that decision. Rowdy's wife of one week made that decision for him. So I actually, uh, given the two choices that he had between Michael and Gwen, I think that it was a good decision on her part. Yeah. Mm hmm. Great. Uh, so yeah. who, who was our next contestants? Oh, yes, James, it was plural. We had Jacob, Jonathan, and Kinsley. They are the group 323 from Tallahassee, Florida. And they sang Dry, You Drive Me Crazy by the Britney Spears. <laughs> but didn't she, wasn't she like in like a, um, she was a waitress in that video or something? I think so. I'm trying like to think of the choreography. The she had glasses. Yes. You drive me crazy. I, I was like, oh, I remember hey, that. Was like almost, that was like 25 years ago almost. Yes, it was um, a minute ago. And I, I, you know what? I love that they came out the gate and said, you know what? We're going to try something new. We're going to try, because I was like, okay, well, what? What? <laughs> I said, there's a huge age gap between all of these, these, these uh, folks. So yes. I said, well, how did they meet? And then, <laughs> so I was like, I, you know, inquiring minds want to know how did this group come know. together? Because usually yeah. a group will come together, they'll, they'll, they'll be brought together, or they'll be like Sorella with the sisters. And right. um, the group that we had last season, that was really right. good. Or, you know, that other um, really, really funky group that we saw with the previous contestant who came back with the group. Oh, um, yes. Yes. But this group was like, you know what? We sang in church. And we were like, right. you know what? Let's put this group together. And what they prefaced it with was, um, we're, we're not going to just sing in harmonies. We're going to do our own thing. But it's all going to come together. Now, I appreciate when you want to try something new. I said, but it sounded all a little discombobulated to me, Stephanie. Um. I personally think the the young lady should have taken the lead, but that's just my personal choice. And I think Reba heard what I heard because Reba quickly hit her button when she started singing. Yeah, the guy should do the harmonies. Yes, um, okay. And, 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 the, and the young lady take the lead. And I think because it kind of looked and came off a little like kind of just thrown together, I think them working with the coaches and really mm -hmm. figuring out what their sound is going to be. Because I think when you deal with a duo or a trio, you got to have a sound. I think yeah. Sorella did it so brilliantly in that they always had a sound. They sang every genre of music, but they had a sound. And right. that's what I'm looking for. And I think that more confidence will come as they come go further in the competition. Mm -hmm. Stephanie? I have to agree in that the setup to their performance for me, and it sounds like for you as well, was misleading because they were basically saying, we're not just going to come on here and sing just a bunch of harmonies. So for me, when I hear that, I'm a very little literal person. So when, some, so when, when the one gentleman said that, I said, well, it sounds like to me that they're going to be singing in unison a lot of the time. Which, right. okay, that's a cool angle. If three of y'all can sing a unison and make it sound like one voice, that could be really cool. But what happened was one member would sing a part and then the other two would sing a harmony and then another person would sing a part. And like, it just, the uniqueness that I was told that I was going to get wasn't necessarily what was given. Correct. And that just, that honestly, and like, like, the these past couple episodes, James and I are recording right after the episode, so we have not had a chance to go back and listen. I feel like I missed some of their performance because I was listening for something specific, something unique yeah. um, that wasn't there. Not saying that they had a bad audition. I was just lo looking and listening for something that wasn't there. So. They sang together. They sang. In, they sang together in harmony. They, I believe, they sang a little bit in unison. One person would sing while the other would, the others would sing a harmony. Like 
they sounded good. Like, and each of them individually sounded really good. I thought that Kinsley had a really unique voice. Um, and I agree. I think hearing her voice was what made um, Reba turn, even though the gentleman that sang at the beginning, Jacob and Jonathan, sounded great, too. I agree. I think that they need to find a sound and find their thing. I think that this pop lane is actually really good for them. I think that they do have a pop lending voice. Oh, yeah. That, that, and those are the songs that they should be singing. When you are a group of three, not only do your vocals have to be tight, your imagery on that stage has to be intentional. And I didn't and I did not feel like there was intentionality with what they were doing on the stage. Um, So I'm glad that they're moving through because I'm interested to see more of them for sure. Yeah, I think Mm -hmm. that working with some of the best musicians and Paul and the band yeah. is going yeah. to really like, hopefully they'll, even though I know this has already taken place already, but hopefully mm-hmm. it, they'll be sponges and really, really absorbing in um, what Trelawney, their vocal coach and, and mm-hmm. Paul and the band are going to do uh, yeah, because um, I think they'll, they can grow exponentially from the experience. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. All right, next we have... Hold on. Let's say it. Let's tell them who... Oh, sorry. Uh, who their yeah. coach was. That's okay. So Reba and Michael both turned for them. Uh, Michael was a little bit of a later minute turn, but Reba and Michael turned and they picked coach Reba. So Re- Reba done sang in a group, okay? Reba sang with, with her, her siblings. So Reba won't have them snatched. Next time we're going to see them, they're going to be snatched. That's right. Yeah. Reba's yeah. going to be like... Get it together. <laughs> now, Absolutely. Don't you stay from that melody. You know how we write That's it. right. That's right. Like, That's I'm right. Get you the note. Come on. <laughs> Take it. Oh, what's his mama? Don't mess with mama <laughs> Reba. That's right. That's right. All right. So uh, next. Uh, oh, I love this next one. Uh, who do we have, Stephanie? Next, we had Miss Gail Bliss, 61 lovely years of age from Little River, South Carolina. And she sang, If It Hadn't Been For Love by The Steel Drivers. Um, I said, you know what? So just to let you all know, um, she got no chair turn. So I didn't really take notes Mm. um, because she had um, no chair turns. But then Snoop, when they were going and, and, and talking, Snoop said, you know what? My mother's name was Gail. Um, you just have that no, spirit. No, her, her mother's sister. Oh, I'm sorry. His aunt. Yes. yes. Sorry. His mother's sister's name was Gail. He, he said you just had that spirit. And he's like, the only reason why I didn't turn was because I was waiting on Reba. And I knew because if Reba did it, I would have not have a chance. So mm-hmm. that's why I didn't press the button. He said, but we have this thing and I'm going to use it right now. And yeah. it was just such a, a wonderful moment on the show. My favorite moment yes. of the show this evening. Yes. Because she was yes. so grateful. Snoop, you could tell, genuinely did want her. But was no, he playing was like sh- hovering over his button the whole time. Like playing strategy. Playing yes. strategy. He had to still continue to play strategy because he knew the second Reba hit it, it was over for him. So right. I think he is going to hold on very tight to Gail. Because mm-hmm. Gail is going to be, in my opinion, his Trojan horse, his secret weapon. Mm-hmm. That because right. you all, she has been performing as a Patsy Klein impersonator or in Patsy Klein review show for 35 years. Right? She just stopped recently doing it. And she has this bucket right. list. And being on The Voice is one, one of the bucket list items. And yes. he can sing. I didn't think it was the greatest audition piece. Um, I thought the mm-hmm. piece got away from her a little bit. But I can tell that given the right song, she is going to soar and be one, mm-hmm. in my opinion, probably of one of the top cont- contestants of the season, uh, like Wendy was back, you yes. know, because when she was like, yeah, I first started playing that role in 1994. And I was like, wow, I was like, that was a couple of summers ago. But yeah, yes. I think I think she's going to be Snoop's, um, uh, Snoop's uh, secret weapon. That's right. That's Seven. right. So this 
this is going to come off sounding in a way that is not very nice, but I mean it in the best way possible, and I will explain. Gail was giving Karen. And when I say giving Karen, I do not mean the derogatory version of giving Karen. I mean Karen Waldrop from last season, who was in the top five and made it to the lives. Miss Gail, Miss Gail's gonna stuff. be our Miss Gail was gonna be our pro pro. Okay, let let yes. she, she, number one. I said she come out. She come out gorgeous. Snatched. She come out put together. Mummy come out snatched. Okay, before she <laughs> before she sang a word, I was like, I already love her. Miss Gail better go through all the way. I want to see Miss Gail on the lives. Like she was, she was giving everything. And I agree, the song might not, song might not have been the greatest, but Snoop wanted to turn by the end so bad. And I was like, hit your dang button. I just love her spirit. I, she's just going to be our pro pro. I know it. I know it. She's had too many years in the industry, too many years in the business to, to not live up to that title. I know she's, I know she's going to do it. So I'm so happy to have her on this show. She, she going to give it to us. She's going to be like, where's my spot? Right. Where's my mark? Where's my mark? (laughs) Yeah. She'll be, she's ready. Where's my mark? Oh, I love her. I love her. Give her the right song. It's going to soar. Ooh. And Snoop and Snoop knows it, and he heard it, and that's why he absolutely, actually it. absolutely, yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so our final performance of the night, um, yes. was, uh, I love, I love it's Austin's, Austin's, with Austin Stansel, yeah, Austin Stansel. Austin, Austin's, yes. bro, you got beautiful. Uh, your daughters, did you say one on the way, bro? One on you the way. Again? You got three girls and one on the way. Hey. Wow. Wow, dude. More power to you. Love it. And Love he it. said, Ooh, baby, baby. Um, by Smokey Robinson. I'm surprised that came out this late at night. I um, said, go ahead, James. Go ahead. Yeah, that's my phone. <laughs> ah, I said, Austin. I said, don't be killing us with that falsetto and that upper extension. I said, and it just kept going and going. He's like, I can't even do it. I said, but, but as good as that falsetto and that upper extension were, sir, I need you to really work on that middle voice. I need you to watch your pitch and watch your breath because I don't want them to think of you as a one-trick pony, okay? Uh-huh. Because uh-huh. you are uberly talented, and I uh-huh. can do the things vocally that you can do, and I can do, Steph will tell you, I can do a little bit vocally. I can do a little bit, okay? Just a little bit, but I can't do that. So you got your little, you got your little niche, sir, but yes. I'm going to need you, and I thought Michael stated it perfectly. He said, what can you do with all the different levels of your voice? I'm excited to see what you're going to do with all the different levels of your voice. Um, the freedom, and here's my advice to you, Mr. Austins, the freedom that you bring to your upper extension and to your falsetto, I need that, to hear that freedom in your middle voice. Because I know you have it. It's just you're so used to, to, to singing in the part of your voice that is so dynamic. That I think more, and I think once more attention is placed in your middle to lower register, and it'll just be you will be a you will be an incredible. I don't want to call you a freak of nature, but a freak <laughs> of nature in the best way. Like uh-huh. you will be an incredible mm-hmm. singer. I mean, you already are an incredible mm-hmm. singer, but I'm just saying, once mm-hmm. you connect, connect that lower and middle chest voice, mm-hmm. um, and that's it's just breath. It's just breath. It's just, I know that you're just so used to soaring all the time, your voice soaring, that it's, you don't even have to think when you're up there. The whole goal, if I was your voice teacher, I would say, I want you to not have to think in your middle or chest voice. Like you don't even have to think in your high voice. I want to all be connected. Gorgeous, gorgeous rendition. Gorgeous falsetto. I loved it. Stephanie? 
when he opened up his mouth, well, even before he opened up his mouth, when they showed him, I was like, Steve, is Steve back? Steve can't. I said, Steve, I said, Steve can't come back. He, I, Steve, you didn't got to. You, I was like, bruh, you got to be away for a few more seasons. I know you like being on the show and everything, but I was like. You to change your name like old girl. <laughs> Steve's back. So Austin love you, opens Steve. up. Love you, Steve. Austin opens up his mouth, and all this falsetto is coming out, and I'm just like, I'm like my mouth is just open, like, it just oh kept my going, god, right? and it just kept going. It's but like, then, but then, where is it? No, but then, but then, here's what had happened. What had happened was it was almost like he was wearing like a button down shirt and had an undershirt underneath, and it, it was buttoned up, and he like opened up like a little piece of the buttoned up shirt and was like he showed us his chest voice real quick and then closed it back and I was like wait wait but you got that too oh wait but you got that too so 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 he went back and did all the falsetto stuff and I was just like oh this this is goodness this is goodness but what he did though James is at the back half of that song he stayed down in his chest voice for a minute Longer than I actually thought he was going to. And that's when I was like, you've got it all. I don't agree. Like, maybe I don't understand what you're saying. But if you're saying that you didn't feel like there was a good connection between the head voice and the chest voice, then then maybe we can have a conversation. I thought that he had full command of both. Oh, Once okay. he got to his chest voice, I was like, oh, you a crooner too? You can do that too? That means I can get some some 90s R&B maybe? Like, because it was, it was, just, yeah, <laughs> please. Because it was just as outstanding, I felt, and it was just as impactful, I felt. And maybe that was because I didn't think he was going to give us much chest voice with this song. But. I was like, oh, we've got holleration in there. We're going to get yeah. holleration from Austin's. We are, we are, we are. So I was so excited. And I was so, I thought that he was so deserving of the four chair turn that he got. Yeah, definitely an extremely unique instrument. Extremely oh, yeah. unique. And oh, it's, yeah. And it's, so who did, oh, no. They cliffhangered us, didn't they? No, they didn't. They didn't. Oh, they no, didn't. no, he picked Gwen. Go win. Yes. Go win. He sure did. Now, um, because we've talked to, <laughs> to, to quite a few um contestants who've worked with Gwen. Um, hey Justin, hey Jackie. Hey Justin. Um yes. and uh yeah, that's a good choice for him. I think, I think so. Gwen's gonna Gwen's gonna Gwen's you know Gwen loves her some nineties R and B, so I think that's what you're gonna get, sis. Yes. Like I think that's yes. good, so you don't have to worry about that. So <laughs> you won't get it. And I want to hear what you hear, Stephanie. You usually spot on with this stuff and, and your ears are bigger than mine in, in these cases. So I'm sticking with you because I remember last season there were some people I was like, no, nah, sis. And I went back and I was like, yo. Oh, no. <laughs> and they made deep, deep runs last season. Yes, they did. Uh, yes, y'all they know did. who you are. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. So, okay. I'm ready for it. I'm here for it. Okay. I'm going to take your okay. advice on this one, Steph. I really am. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh yes. what a great night. What a great night. Yes. Yes. Stephanie, it's always a blast when it's with you, but you know what? I got to hit the hay. Absolutely. I am, I am tired. You are tired. And uh, yes. we do this for the love of it. <laughs> yes. We do. All right. So, Stephanie, tell the pitches what they need to hear. Sure. So don't forget to follow and subscribe to the Pitchy Podcast on your favorite podcast platform so you can be the first to know when we drop a new episode. And also check us out on YouTube. Search for The Pitchy Podcast and hit that subscribe button so you know when we drop a new video. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok uh, at The Pitchy Podcast for new episode alerts, episode clips, and so much more. And also we are on Patreon. You will hear bonus content from our Patreon about our initial reaction to this this episode of MC's The Voice, the salaciousness, and there will also be bonus content within uh, our main feed on the Patreon telling whether we would have turned our chairs or not. So if you would like that bonus content, 
uh, tap the link in the notes for to join us on Patreon. All right. Well, we'll see you all again next week. We don't have a double show week, but uh, we can't wait for next week. Yes. I'm excited. Don't don't disappoint me, voice, with this leak this week. Don't disappoint me. Y'all better bring it. You better bring it. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.